Apocalypse. Arguably the third most powerful Marvel character behind Galactos and Thanos. His real name, which hopefully I don't butcher this too much, is On Saba Nur, which stands for the first one. Or at least, you know, it's supposed to stand for the first one. But when you put it through Google Translate, it doesn't really give you anything in Arabic. Apparently, it's supposed to mean the morning light in Arabic. But, you know, I couldn't verify that. So, moving on. Almost ten years ago, the world first learned of the existence of mutants. But what if the world's first mutant actually appeared thousands of years ago? After hearing that Apocalypse was, you know, the first one, I couldn't help but think... Was he the first mutant? Well, according to science, not really. That is because we are all mutants in our own way. Even the very first human was a mutant. Every single life form is just one mutant form of the previous life form. That's just the way that evolution is. Quick side tangent about evolution. I got asked recently, if humans evolved from apes, then why are there still apes? This is quite easy to explain because gene mutations like the one that Apocalypse had, well, they kind of happen all the time. You know, not specific to the one that Apocalypse had, but anyways. Let's just say that there's one group of apes in Africa. Now they separate into two groups, and maybe they separate into their own little groups. If one ape in one of their own groups had a mutation that made them more human-like, and eventually they had more mutations that made them more human-like, that doesn't mean that all of the other groups of apes would become more human-like as well. In the X-Men universe, Apocalypse's name, the first one, or the first mutant, might not mean that he was actually the first mutant, but the first person to hold the mutant X gene. In the movie, Apocalypse says in his creepy voice, You are all my children. I counted up all of the characters that are in X-Men, and there's 106. With thousands or even maybe a million mutants in the universe that just aren't important enough to be in the story. Having a few thousand descendants for someone who was essentially a king in 5000 BC, that's not that impressive. For example, one man in Spain had a mutated gene where he became the first person with blue eyes. Now this guy probably got busy with a bunch of women, and since then, every single person with blue eyes has spawned from this man's loins from around 5000 BC around the same time as Apocalypse. And considering that 8% of the world has blue eyes now, this one guy has over 600 million descendants. Now when you compare that to Apocalypse, who only has a few thousand, maybe even just one million, we can say that no one must have wanted to get it on with this gray-skinned, blue-lipped, evil bastard. Speaking of that, how did he get his weird color. Medical professionals would say that he has deoxygenated blood, most likely coming from heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, or even some type of cancer. But he may have also gotten that coloring by having high amounts of silver interact with his body. There is a condition called Argyra, which turns your skin blue. Just ask Paul Carrison, who ended up drinking and applying collodial silver daily which made his skin permanently blue. Even though Apocalypse's blue skin gives him a unique look, what makes him stand out is his ability to, oh, how do you say in gaming terms, pwn all of the noobs. Apocalypse has a lot of badass powers like superhuman strength, superhuman stamina, he can fly, teleport, has telekinesis, he can generate energy fields, alter the molecules of his body, and oh yeah, that little side power of immortality. But a lot of these abilities don't come from Apocalypse himself, they come from, or are enhanced by, some random celestial technology. But as a self-proclaimed scientist, I have some questions about his powers. Like when he changes his body from being 6 feet tall to 30 feet tall, where does he get all of that extra energy needed to grow 24 feet? Doing my best National Geographic narrator impression, the fastest growing organism that I know is a baby blue whale, which can put on nearly 90 kilograms of mass on any given day up until they're around 7 months old. In that time, they will also grow about 7 meters, which is 23 feet for all of you Americanos out there. The reason why a blue whale is able to grow so fast is because it takes molecules from several thousand pounds of food that it eats every day and uses it to build tissue for growth. 
By that measure, in order for Apocalypse to grow 24 feet so quickly, he would have to take in the energy equivalent of 860,000 pounds of food in a few seconds. That's 2.6 million apples, everybody. If an average American ate their standard 16 pounds of apples per year, it would take them 162,500 years to eat that many apples. Now I know that Apocalypse has an ability that allows himself to absorb energy and alter the molecules of his body and surroundings. And he could probably use those powers to transform his arms into jets and other weapons like he did in the comic books, right? Wrong. You see, Apocalypse is said to be able to change the molecules of his surroundings, not the atoms. For example, he could change the fatty chains in his body to diamond if you really wanted to, because they are both largely made of carbon atoms. But if he wanted to make his hands into jet engines like he did in the comic books, first, that would be a dumbass decision for doing so because he can sort of fly using telekinesis. Second, he would need the atoms like iron, carbon, and maybe some manganese, chromium, and nickel to make that jet engine. Your body doesn't have high traces of any of those elements except for carbon, so he couldn't readily turn his body parts into jets or any other kind of thing that he wants without being able to change the atoms themselves. Even though Apocalypse himself can't change atoms, it is still possible to change atoms into other atoms. In fact, we see it all the time from about 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. The sun has such a strong force of gravity that at its core, it is able to fuse two hydrogen atoms into one helium atom. After doing the calculation, I found that 9.29 times 10 to the 37 helium atoms are being created each second. That's about twice as many helium atoms as there are total atoms that compose the bodies of the human race. Join us May 27th as we explore this mystery and follow in the footsteps of Insabanur. Friday night at 7.30, open the PLCB. Thank you very much for watching everyone, click the awesome button if you are awesome, as always, and I'd like to refer you to a collaboration channel which I have made with my pals Dale from ThinkFact, Jabril from SEFD and SEFD Science, and Matt from Conjecture. We made a, a collaboration channel where we all kind of upload things that we want to talk about, um, and we upload them every Thursday and sometimes a little bit more, so go check it out, it's called Everything Else, link is in the description, or you can click our logo, which should be popping up on the screen right now. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more science videos, and I'm very excited to be making some, uh, a lot more videos in the, in the coming week, actually, so, um, stay tuned, and, yeah, you were all very, 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 very beautiful people, people, did I say that in English, and I will see you next time.